and in the Greek tongue. Uh, is it, in as much as God is not a respecter of persons, what does that mean? I just thought I wanted to do a lecture about that, okay? Because God does not respect anyone because of what they look like, what they have, what they think they have. He respects you for what you have done, okay? Action. Our Father is a Father of action, and He expects us to produce as well. Let me see your works, I will see your faith, okay? But at the same time, it can be very dangerous for you to fall in that old trap of being a respecter of persons because you're judging, okay? And you're showing, the word actually, that Greek word means to show partiality. That's not good. That's not right, to show favoritism. You know, a parent, even as our Heavenly Father watches it and never shows partiality, neither should you. You should always, among your own children, one of the worst, sin, one of the worst things a parent can do is to show partiality between children. That, that's terrible. Absolutely heart-rending. So neither will our Father do that. But that does not mean that our Father does not respect what you have done and what you're going to do even, what your heart is in actuality, what the action is of your very soul. That he does respect, but he does not respect someone because of what they think they might be, what they have, or something for no reason, in other words. Open your Bibles, if you would, to James chapter 2. Let's look into this just a little bit. Prosopolitis, uh, to show partiality. Never do it. Never. Um, and our Father's Word in James chapter 2, verse 1. Let's go with it, with that word of wisdom from our Father. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. Uh, okay. Uh, verse 2. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring, in goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, verse 3, and if you have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Never show partiality. Unfortunately, Many churches will say, hey, that man with the gold ring, set him over there where we pass the plate and go by two times if possible. Okay, you know? I mean, that's kind of respecting him and again for the wrong reasons, okay? People are people and all people are children of God. And, uh, you know, in the eternity, God's children and their souls are precious. And in his eternity, he treats his children fairly. That is not to say that he does not reward one child maybe a little more than another, but he's a fair judge, you understand? It's not just because he paid, played favorite. It's because they earned it. That's why people today, sometimes people take a little, a, a scripture just a little too far in saying God's not a respecter of persons, he's going to treat you just like everybody else. Well, that's, that doesn't catch it. When you serve God, he's going to bless you. He's going to bless you above somebody that doesn't. Okay. You're going to have better luck, so to speak. Okay. He's going to take care of you. If your heart is right and you're honest with him, he's going to be honest with you. And, and he will bless one more than he will another, but he will not respect uh, someone more than another in the sense of favoritism, okay? That irks him. Now, is the line hard to divide there? I don't think so. I don't think so. It is human nature and it is God's nature to use those that he knows he can trust. 
to use those that know the plan of day, to use those that know his word, this letter he has sent us, and knows if he calls on them, he can count on them. Let me give you an example of that. In the great book of Jeremiah, we're not going there. In the great book of Jeremiah, in the first six verses, he, sa he says to Jeremiah, hey, I chose you as, uh, before you ever entered your mother's womb. Now, a lot of people would say, boy, he was showing favoritism. Uh-uh. No way. Don't you know Jeremiah better than that? He earned it. Okay. He earned it naturally when he was with the Father in the first earth age. And this is why that you got to shut those old blinders off that there was an age before this one. And as it is written in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, I chose you before the foundation of this age. Not world, age. Okay? At Satan's rebellion, you stood against him then, and you're going to do it again. And do you know something? He can trust you for that. He knows he can depend on you. You're not a wimp. And you can, you can follow his instructions. And other than messing up a little bit every once in a while, as some of us do, maybe some of you don't, I do, okay? And I don't know why. I don't know why, but I do. But then I always know how, you know, I learn from that. And maybe all of us can learn from that. We can learn from our mistakes how to help other people's mistakes, even, as a point taken. But he knew Jeremiah. He wasn't partial to him. And then he went further than that. He said, while you were in your mother's womb, I chose you, I assigned you as a prophet. One of the major prophets. Well, wasn't he being a respecter of persons? Uh-uh. Jeremiah earned it. He earned it uh, justly and fairly. Well, how can you say that, Pastor Murray? Because God is fair, and I know it. If you don't know that and if you don't believe that, you're in a heap of hurt. Don't ever whine or gripe at God. He's always fair, more than fair, okay? Because he does not show partiality. He gives people what they've got coming. Sometimes that's not too good for the person, okay? Because what they've got coming isn't necessarily something you would want, especially not all at one time, okay? So... God, but, but that's fair also, all right? But don't show partiality. Do you know something? In doing that, like this happens to be at meetings where you might be teaching God's Word, do you realize you could drive somebody away from God's Word that way? You could take a soul that might have been doing God's work the hard way and with you showing partiality, you could wound that person and drive them away from the Word. Eternal life you're dealing with. So be careful. Never, one of the cruelest things in the world is to show partiality. God has no part of it. Don't you have any part of it? Okay, and um, verse, let's go with verse 4. And are ye not then partial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts? You got, you're double-minded if you do that. You're, you're uh, you know, uh, you see, we have one judge. And that judge is our Heavenly Father. And my advice is, is that you recognize that He is the judge and when you start judging yourself, you're getting on his toes. Do you realize what kind of danger you're in when you get on God's toes? He's going to get you off in a hurry, okay? He's going to correct you. So don't, don't ever be partial and set yourself up as a judge of people. That's God's business, and that's God's doing, okay? Verse 5, Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him? In other words, he's promised it to who? 
them that love him. It doesn't matter if they're rich, poor, out of luck, down on their luck, up on their luck, okay? Incidentally, there's no such thing as luck. You're, you have more when you work harder, okay? When you work real hard, you got good luck, but you made it yourself, okay? Uh, verse 6, but ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do you think that rich men are fair to you? That this is to say uh, people that are rich with ill-gotten gains and work themselves into a judgeship. We're beginning to see some of this in the world today of judges that have their own um, agenda rather than what God's law might say, and that's what they're supposed to judge by as best they can, which is the law of this land. It was taken from the Word of God. Verse 7, Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called? Don't they kind of blaspheme Christ when they begin judging people falsely, unfairly? Verse 8, if you fulfill the royal law, what's that royal law? Well, the king's law. Well, who's the king? There's only one. King of kings, Lord of lords. Okay. His rule. He be, he's the word, the living word. According to the scripture, it's easy to check it out. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You do well. You know, that's kind of like, um, well, does that mean if he's a rich neighbor or a poor neighbor? Didn't say. A neighbor is a neighbor. A neighbor is one of the best gifts God can give you. And if you're 90 times out of 100, if you're good to your neighbor, guess what? He's going to be good to you. And if you've got bad neighbors, guess what? <laughs> Probably there's a reason they're bad neighbors, and it may be you. Okay. But a good neighbor watches your home when you're gone you know, and, and helps you out when you're in a bind and so forth. Neighbors are just fantastic, and it's way to your profit to see that you uh, howdy your neighbor, all right? Verse 9, uh, but if you have respect to persons, you commit sin. Do you understand that? It's a sin coming out the gate and are convinced of the law as transgressors, or uh, rather, uh, yeah, convinced of the law as what, what is sin? Sin's transgressing the law, okay? And, and you do it when you respect persons, when you show per partiality. Love everyone, okay, in Christ's name. Right? Now, there's some that love him. Understand there was a qualification placed on this. Those that love him, love God, don't, don't, don't judge between them, okay? Verse 10, for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he's guilty of all. Thank God for repentance, all right? Verse 11, for he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. 12, so speak ye. And so do as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Well, what's the law of liberty? That's a little mix in a little bit of repentance and so forth, okay? For he shall have judgment without mercy that hath showed no mercy, and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. It, uh, it trumps over. Do you, do you not understand what that means? It means if you repent and if you love the Lord and if you, even if you sin and break a law, if you go to him with, with it through grace, unmerited favor, it trumps. He forgives you, okay? Uh, what doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and hath not works? Can faith save him? And, of course, the answer is no. Don't be partial. Always treat your brethren equally. Uh, that is to say, again, where you draw the line, one that you can count on more, count on them more. Use them more. There's no, no sin in that. That's why sometimes the old sword, double sword, falls the wrong way if you're not careful. You have to use common sense. Let's go back to the Old Testament and see what it has to say about this. Back in All the way back in one of the books of law, Deuteronomy, 
Let's go, if we could, to chapter 1 of that great book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 1, and let's pick it up with uh, verse 14. Make it 12. Verse 12. Partiality. Showing preference. Never show preference without cause. Verse 12 reads, this is when Moses, I mean, hey, Israel was growing, they were out. He had to have some help in judging or in, and in helping the people to lead them. Verse 12 reads, Deuteronomy 1, how can I myself alone bear your cumbrance and your burden and your strife? How, how can I take care of all this myself? We'll be standing here all day with the line going over the hill. Take ye wise men and, under, of, and understanding and know among your tribes and I will make them rulers over you. As far as judgment and leadership is concerned. And ye answered me and said, The thing which thou hast spoken is good for us to do. That's a good thing. We won't have to stay in court so long. I'll call it court judgment. 15. So I took the chief of your tribes, wise men, and and knowing and made them heads over you, captains over thousands and captains over hundreds and captains over fifties, captains over tens and officers among your tribes. Uh, verse 16, and I charged your judges at that time saying, here are the causes between your brethren and judge righteously between every man and his brother and the stranger that is with him. You always judge fairly. If you're going to serve God, beloved, that's got to come foremost in your mind, that you're going to be fair in everything, especially when it comes to judgment and the handling of people. Never be partial. It wounds. It hurts. It can drive people away. It certainly can. Verse 16. And I charged your judges at that time, saying, Here are the causes between your brethren. You listen to them. And judge righteously between every man and his brother and the stranger that is with him. Again, 17. You shall not respect persons in judgment. That's a law. You shall not respect persons in judgment. Now, Paul in the Hebrew. But you shall hear the small as well as the great. You shall not be afraid of the face of a man, for the judgment is God's, and the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me, and I will hear it. Moses says, I'll take care of the hard cases. I know how to do it. Do you know how he could take care of the hard cases? Just like any person of God can. They're wise enough to know, turn it over to God. He can cut it, all right? He knows how to handle it when you can't. Verse 18, to complete our reading here. And I command you at that time all the things which you should do. And he laid it out real straight, and it was a plan that worked. And what was one of the main issues? Judge fairly when you do. Don't put the small over the great. And don't show preference. Don't show preference. Don't be a respecter of persons. You know, um, if a person earns respect, then respect is due. But to respect somebody for no reason at all, just because, well, for, they may have money, okay? And you, know, you can even spoil the rich person if you do that. You know, they got, they got to earn respect just like anyone else. Money won't buy respect, okay? It, it won't dent it. It may help you get in favor with a lot of people, but that may be the reason they favor you. So respect somebody honestly and fairly, but never be a respecter of persons by showing partiality. That's what cuts the line. That's what draws the line. It is a sin, and it is a great sin, because you're trying to step into God's shoes, and he hates unfairness. 
He really does. That's what Satan tries to bring into the world, is unfairness and bad judgment. And when you follow him or allow him to confuse you, then your life will be a mess, bad judgment. Don't, you know, uh, it's all right to use, to have made a bad judgment, but correct it as soon as you can. You know, it'll repair. Your life won't end because of it. Don't get depressed. Look for truth. Be fair. And God will always bless you. Okay? So there we have even in the Old Testament coming out the gate. God's law and teaching treat everybody fairly. Okay, let's go to Mark chapter 12 in the New Testament. Let's see what Christ would say about some of these things. Mark chapter 12, let's pick it up with verse 13. Christ is being tried here. See that you're never tried and the, the enemy gains the victory. Verse 13, and it reads of Mark chapter 12. And they send unto him certain of the Pharisees and of the Herodians. These are government officials. They're lawyers. They're sharpies, okay? Bunch of slicks. To catch him in his words. Let's trip him up so that we can get rid of him. This man, Jesus. Boy, what a, in as much as he was the word, that'd be pretty hard to do, wouldn't it? They had big thoughts. Verse 14, and when they were come, they say unto him, Mas this is the way Satan will talk to you. Master, he'll always put you up there, okay? When somebody comes to you like that, you're the best. You better grab your wallet, okay? <laughs> You better cinch up your belt, all right? That's Satan's main method of operation. You're sure a good old boy. Well, you know better than that. <laughs> anyway, okay, in all fairness, watch. Master, we know that thou art true. Now, isn't that something? If they knew he was true, why didn't they listen to him? Say, they're putting him on. And carest for no man. There again, respecter of no man, okay? For thou regardest not the person of men, but teacheth the way of God in truth. Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? Now, you see, Caesar was the only king at this time. And if anyone gave tribute to anyone but that king, they had him, okay? He could have said, give it to God, you know, but he's real intelligent, all right? If, the, if you owe tax, what do you do? Verse um, 15, shall we give or shall we not give? Should, should we pay our taxes or not? But he, knowing their hypocrisy, said unto them, why tempt ye me? I mean, it was pretty dumb, wasn't it? I mean, they were really trying to set him up. Why tempt you me? Bring me a penny that I may see it. Bring it here. One of Caesar's coins, got it? Um, verse 16. And they brought, it, they brought it, and he saith unto them, Whose is this image and inscription? Who's it? Right here on this coin, whose is it? And they said unto him, Caesar's. 17, and Jesus answering said unto them, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God, listen to me carefully, and to God the things that are God's. Now, let me ask you a question. What things are God's? What things do belong to God? That's what he wants. You ever read Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4? Don't go there. I'm going to tell you what it says if you don't know, okay? It says, all souls belong to God. And what did God say? Let us make man in our image. So the inscription on the coin was Caesar. Give that to Caesar. 
but you're a child of God and he owns your soul, that's what he wants is your love. Give that to God, your love, your obedience, and your service. Doesn't matter what you give Caesar, but you're, do you understand? His inscription is on you, whether you like it or not. You may refuse to serve him, but when he said, let us make man in our image, he put his seal on you of what he expects, and he wants your love. He wants your soul. I mean, let me ask you something. You got any children? Don't you want them? Hmm? Don't they mean something to you? Well, what would make you ever think you didn't mean something to God? You're his child. It's very important to him. So give that to God that is God's, and that's you. Okay. Don't let Caesar trip you up, and don't let some Herodian government official outsmart you, or you're, you're pretty poorly prepared to serve the kingdom. Okay. Give that to Caesar that is Caesar's and give that to God which is God's. And God does not appreciate a respecter of persons. That's to say partiality. Am I drawing a picture that gives us a tight line to walk to be respectful of people that deserve respect in serving God? and at the same time be no respecter of persons, that's not hard at all. It's just being fair and doing what's right and, and um, loving God's children not for what they may say they are or what you might think they are, but what they are, okay? What they are. That's how you receive them and how they have stood up to you. Well, somebody else told me they might be, I, 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 don't you ever listen to somebody else. You know, if you have not seen that person do that thing, don't you go accusing because you don't know. That's gossip, okay? So be fair to the person in that light also that you are a servant of God and that you follow God's way showing being no respecter of persons. You see, gossip, malicious uh, mouthing, all falls under judgment. And unfortunately, sometimes it's very false judgment, very, very wrong to judge people with lies, okay? That also is harmful, and that also is hurtful. Again, prosopoleptus, don't be partial because of money, uh, uh, attitudes, and don't exhibit par uh, favoritism for no reason. Everybody's got to earn what they have and what they've got coming. Turn with me to the great book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6. I want to go with verse 6. Concerning uh, being servants and concerning serving the Lord. Um, and he had just said, Serv uh, servants be obedient to them that are your masters, okay, according to flesh. Even them, if they treat you right, you be appreciative. Verse 6, not with eye service, not just to make it look good, as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. You know, that's important. A lot of, you understand there are people that will teach you that it's not good to pray in the will of God. What, what kind of malarkey is that? If you love the Father and you know his wisdom, why wouldn't you want to be in his will? Or why wouldn't you want it to be his will for anything you prayed for? Because, you know something? Because he loves you and he'll keep you out of trouble. You know what? Most of the time in your life, if you're not careful, you get yourself into trouble. So pray that it be his will and follow him. 
fairly, seven. With goodwill, doing service as to the Lord and not to men. If, if you're going to be a Christian, live a Christian life. You're a Christ man, okay? And there's no gender in that. Eight, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord. Do you want me to read that again? Do you, is your life all messed up? You got problems? Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. It don't matter whether you're a slave or whether you own slaves. Uh, or, or you're a master of, of a, a large company. It doesn't matter. When you do what's good, God's going to see that you got coming to you what you do. When you do bad, guess what? He's going to see you get what you got coming to you there also. So it, it, it's you p uh, pumping your own bicycle, all right? What, well, my life is all messed up. Well, straighten up. Fly right. When you're flying, always keep the dirty side of the airplane down, okay? Otherwise, you're in trouble, okay? You're upside down, okay? Uh, or I, I guess I need to explain that. Oil always runs to the bottom of the airplane and kind of streaks down the bottom. And you shine it, and it's pretty, but you look at it from the bottom, and it is ugly, okay? A lot of times it is, especially if you've been on a long flight. But... I want you to absorb that real good. God knows what you're doing. And when you do good, he's going to bless you. You've got good coming back to you. It's in the book. It's in the book of life. That's why you want to be sure you repent when you mess up, too, because that erases the bad. But never will he erase the good because you've got that coming. That is yours, and nobody, nobody can take that away from you. God would not allow that. So, again, anytime you're serving him and his will, and his will is this word, he's going to bless you for it, and you're going to be a blessing to those you come in contact with. Um, okay, verse 9, And you masters... Do the same things unto them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, and he's keeping up. Now there is there respect of persons with him. God just doesn't do it. Doesn't have any favorites. The people he favors have earned it, such as Jeremiah, okay, as an example, or you as an example. That's still in effect to this day. Those that serve him in his will, when you do a good deed, it may not be any more than just a person having a bad day and you say, come on, the Lord loves you. I love you. You have a good day. Come on. Everything's cool. That's, that's, that's God's work. That shows your oomph, your faith, your good will your presence in carrying forth the Christ man. I guess what I'm saying is it shows off the Christ in you. And others sense that and they can feel it. They want to emulate it. They want to be like you in that case, happiness. And of course, God never being that respecter of persons. And then what follows that after you do that? Put on the armor, the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He can't touch you. If you're fair and you will put on the gospel armor, Satan's going to try you. Oh, it may, look, it may look really bad out there for you on some day. Pray about it and get out there and get them. Okay? Show them what a man or a woman or a child of God looks like. Okay? Do God's business. And God will always reward you. He will always be with you. He will show you through. How many of you have ever been asked a question at a crucial time and the right answer just popped right into your mouth? And you know you're not that smart. <laughs> you, know? You, know, you know, who do you think was taking care of you? Okay. 
put on the gospel of armor and be protected. Against who? Against your neighbor? Against your brother? No. Against Satan, and don't you ever let him have room in your house. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. I mean, do you understand what that, you know, it's not your neighbor you're wrestling with so much, but the devil and his little children. Principalities against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Doesn't get any higher than Satan as far as wickedness is concerned. So be prepared for it. And the way God will bless you is if, if you're in his will. If you're not being partial and if you're taking care of business. You know, there is an old word that slips in here. You've got to discipline yourself. You hear me say it an awful lot. And an old Marine can't help saying because he knows it's true. A church without discipline or a family without discipline is not really a family. You just really haven't quite got there yet. Discipline is very necessary. You must discipline yourself in God's word and absorb it. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. You can do it. Stand for something. Make a difference. When other people, you know, we're, we're coming to a place where you're seeing more and more people to what in the world is happening? What, what is God allowing this to happen? They're confused. They don't understand. And when, even if we have a leader that if his mouth says something, you can believe it, that's the way it's going to be, that confuses them. Now, that's really something, isn't it? They'll say, I just wonder what he's going to do. He's going to do what he said he would do. That confuses people anymore. They're not used to honesty and straightforwardness. You be that way. You be in God's will. And you serve him. Let him know. You know what he wants from you? Not that image on a coin, Caesar's. He wants your love. He wants you to love him. That gives, that really pleasures him because it means you want to serve him. It means you want him in your life. You know you are his child. And you're saying to him and he's saying to you, come on in. Come on in. Welcome home. And that's what he wants. Say that he receives it. But you have that armor of God on. And don't ever forget the girt. That's your belt. That's what holds your britches up. It's the word of God. Okay? Don't ever lose your britches. Okay? You keep, keep up in the word of God and be fair in it. And you'll do real good. In closing, Colossians chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 23. We're going to read three short verses, and I'm through. Verse 23 reads in the great book of Colossians, of 23 of chapter 3. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men. I mean, who are you dedicated to? Maybe I could even say as, as a child, who were you christened to? Who were you baptized to? Not men, but to your Father, okay? To the Son, 24, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. You don't show favoritism, you earn it. And you have a reward, do you understand? God is not a respecter of persons for who they are, but what they do. And if you have done his will, his way, you've got great rewards. And you have, do you understand that word inheritance? What, however poor you are in the flesh means nothing with inheriting 
from your father that owns everything, you can't have more than that, okay? You shouldn't even want more than that than him and serving him because he has been so very, very good to us. Um, and, and you know, he didn't say maybe or make a little guess that you might have that inheritance. He said, know it. You can count on it. To complete the lecture, verse 25, but he that doeth wrong shall receive of the wrong which he hath done. There is no respecter of persons, and there isn't. You are, you are the captain of your own ship, and you're the one that sails it. And what you earn in God's will is beautiful, and you're blessed. Beloved, it's a lot better to be blessed of God than it is to be corrected of God, for it just stated the evil are going to get theirs, and God can, what does God consider evil? Those that would go against, transgress his word. Okay? His word is so simple and it's so easy to follow, to receive his blessings and to be blessed. You know, I think everybody wants to be loved, and man, does he love you. He loves you so very, very much that he lays all this out for you. And the conditions are not that tough. It's just doing what's right. And you know, just naturally, Christian born, you should want to do what's right. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for the word. Thank you, Father, for not being a respecter of persons, but seeing us for what we are, and what we will be, Father. We thank you for that in Yeshua, Jesus' precious name. Amen. The Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting late in the game. You need to know what the Mark of the Beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, many will be deceived.